One more topic I want to get to, because there was some development yesterday, posted the item at PFT on a busy trade deadline day. The moment on Monday night, when we're minding our own collective business, watching the game between the Raiders and the Lions, first drive of the game, questionable non-call of intentional grounding, Jared Goff throws it in the direction of Jameer Gibbs. It lands far from him. It doesn't seem to land in the vicinity of an eligible receiver. No call of intentional grounding. Joe and Troy bring in John Perry, the rules analyst, who's a longtime NFL referee. John Perry says, probably should have been grounded. Drive continues. Lions kick a field goal. Commercials run. Game returns. And there's Walt Anderson. For the first time ever, in clothes other than his referee uniform that he used to wear. Walt Anderson, the senior VP of officiating, with his NFL shield on his polo shirt, brought in, pipeline, straight from 345 Park Avenue, where he's watching the game and issuing rulings on reviewable calls or non-calls. He explains the rule. He explains that Jared Goff throwing the ball in the direction and vicinity of Jameer Gibbs proper non-call of intentional grounding. Now, as I said yesterday on PFT Live, the rule says the ball must be thrown in the direction of and land in the vicinity of the player. Throwing it in his direction, having it land in his vicinity. The idea that Jameer Gibbs could have reached up his hand and touched it, well, if it's a missile that soars by his head and lands 20 yards away, it doesn't land in his vicinity. And that's not what it was Monday night, but you get my point. Walt Anderson didn't exactly state the rule accurately. And as I said yesterday, sorry if I expect the person who's ultimately in charge of all NFL officials to know the rules. Sorry if I'm asking too much. So what I wanted to find out yesterday after the show ended, why did they do this? How did they do this? And how should we expect this capacity to be used in the future? Because my immediate takeaway was twofold. One, they just undermined John Perry, who's under salary to be the rules analyst for ESPN. He says, yes. Walt Anderson says, no. And two, how often are they going to use this? When is this going to happen? This unannounced cameo like Don Rickles on The Tonight Show back in the day. When's it going to happen that Walt Anderson is just going to show up during a game? And what does it mean when he doesn't? My overriding point is you cannot be selectively transparent. You either are transparent or you're not. You can't just randomly say, hey, let's put Walt on to talk about this one. I mean, that night alone, there was a fumble later in the game, Lions fumble, Raiders recover, controversy about the ruling. Where's Walt? We just had Walt. Walt talking about a meaningless, non-call of intentional grounding on the opening drive of the game. We're getting to the meat here. We're getting to the crunch time. This is a big call. Where's Walt? So unless you're ready to use him all the time, you shouldn't use him any of the time. And the NFL's position is they have Walt Anderson available to communicate real time with the game broadcast about calls that are made. And it's one thing to communicate off camera. The capacity to have him on camera is something that they've had in place for several years In certain circumstances, they believe it's necessary to use. This was the first time they decided to use it. I don't know what distinguishes this from anything else. You know, I don't know if it was in place in 2018, but it would have been a good time to have Al Riveron chime in on why pass interference wasn't called against the Rams in the NFC Championship game. So the problem with this is you can't just barnstorm in random. It creates an expectation they're going to use this all the time. And if they do use it all the time, why are the networks paying for rules analysts? I mean, really, and I'm not trying to get Terry McCauley, Gene Steratore, Dean Blandino, John Perry unemployed here. But, you know, one of the ideas that has kind of sprung up in the aftermath of all this, why don't they put some money together and go get Dean Blandino and let him be the guy who's available for the primetime games, for the standalone games, for the 425 p.m. Eastern games, who can come in and explain to large audiences why certain calls are made or not made. And, hey, for the money the networks would save on not having their own rules analysts, and I'm sorry, 
current rules analysts. I'm not trying to, you know, take away your gravy train, but that money goes to Blandino. Just charge the networks a fee for the in-game rules analyst. That pays for Blandino. Not that the NFL needs that anyway. They don't need to spread that cost around. They should do it anyway. They should value that position. They should already have Dean Blandino, 7 million, 10 million, whatever million a year, because he was good at it. And part of the reason he was good at it, some of the rules analysts who were referees, sometimes I wonder, are there rivalries from when they were referees that have lingered into their role as rules analysts? Are there axes to grind? Are there scores to settle? Is a rules analyst more likely to be critical of this referee than that referee? Is a rules analyst more likely to support this referee than that referee? Blandino was never a referee. Blandino doesn't have those relationships. And the one big takeaway I had from the item Peter King wrote years ago when he was running the Monday morning quarterback at SI.com, he was embedded with Gene Steratore's crew, and it was clear they obsess over their grades. Obsess. It's competitive. It may be a little catty at times among these referees. Everybody's jockeying for position. Everybody wants to be the favorite. Everybody wants the Super Bowl. I think having someone like Blandino be the voice in all these broadcasts. Again, if you're going to do it at all, that's the way to do it. That's the right way to do it. Somebody who's very good at explaining the rules, somebody who's good on camera in speaking in a way that's extemporaneous and compelling and persuasive to the audience and ultimately is willing to say when a mistake was made. That's the other problem too. When the NFL used to have Mike Pereira on total access once a week or Dean Blandino when he had that job explaining different rules and admitting mistakes as needed, the referees got mad. They got mad that they were getting called out. Well, then don't screw up. Everybody else has consequences in this sport when they screw up. You're the only ones that don't have to answer to the media on a regular basis after every game about your bad calls. So, you know, you don't like getting called out. Don't screw up. So... Um, anyway, the NFL ultimately said they believed it was warranted on Monday night to use Walt Anderson in that spot. They didn't explain why it was warranted then. Moving forward in these standalone primetime games, every time there's a controversy that results in the rules analyst entering the discussion, the question I'm going to have is, where's Walt Anderson? And does the fact that he didn't show up in that moment count as evidence that he agrees with whatever the rules analyst had to say. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.